so again, your question is related to uh, what sort of regimens we would have as treatment options for patients who are new diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. The first thing I would like to really uh, tell you is that the first thing we have to do is to try to stabilize the patient. So before you think of chemotherapy, you really need to make sure that your patient is clinically stable. It means that if they have obstructive jaundice, you have to successfully deal with it because the liver function test is very important for you to, to, to be able to give subsequent treatments. If they are in pain, you have to stabilize the patient. Those things will not take you that long, but they make a big difference to the quality of life of the patient because we don't have curative therapies. We still want them to have good quality of life. These things can be done quickly. And then the decision what chemotherapy to give, systemic treatment. I have to tell you that uh, as an academic uh, GI oncologist, I also have to stress that patients have to be considered for clinical trials because the treatments we have now are not great. They, they're we call them standards. They have uh, ability to prolong survival, progression-free survival, survival. But at the end of the day, even with the best group of patients we're treating, we're rarely hitting the one-year median survival with those regimens. So what are the options? So we have uh, a patient who comes to me for a, uh, for a treatment for, uh, for stage four cancer. I have three or four options. Again, uh, the, mo the number one option, which I'm not going to discuss any further, which would have been my number one, would be the clinical trial. But outside of the clinical, clinical trial, I have four options. One option would be to give them uh, Folferinox, which is a combination of three cytotoxic drugs. Folferinox is a, a bit of an aggressive treatment. It's not the right treatment for um, probably most of the patients we see, either because of their age, the median age of patients uh, we see with metastatic disease is 72. That was really the top end of the range in terms of the Folferinox trial. And my, by experience, I know that Folferinox doesn't fit that well with older patients. The second thing, which probably is the most important one, is the performance status. Patients who have good performance status, you can consider for combination treatments. And um, the combination that we have to offer to every patient would be Folferinox, but also the gemcitabine, not Paclitaxel. Statistically, if we look at the patient characteristics in the clinical trials, if we look at our own experience with the two regimens, most patients who we would like to give them combination therapy really fit into the gemcitabine, not Paclitaxel, rather than the Folferinox. Uh, the quality of life, again, is very important. I have to remind you that. It's really a very important consideration when we really deal with these, uh, uh, with these patients. And then you have patients who have uh, performance status 2 plus or 3. Those patients, many of them may not tolerate combination therapy and they would like to have some treatment. And I think gemcitabine single agent with all its limitations would be the thing which you would, rec would recommend to those patients. But also we have a group of patients, which is my option number four. Those patients, we will not recommend chemotherapy. Those patients, we will uh, only talk about supportive palliative care. These patients are in fact more than we think they exist because we don't see them as oncologists uh, that often because those patients might not even reach to the oncologist. They're, been, they're being seen as they're diagnosed like on a floor of the hospital and some, someone comes in and says, oh, really there isn't much we can do, hospice care. So, so these are the four possibilities, I would call them more than options that we face. For Fairnox, for the very good performance status patients, uh, the bit of a younger patients, good organ function, and then you have gemcitabine, not Paclitaxel for really a fair number of patients we see who have performance status could be zero or could be two. They are patients who c can be in their even 80s that we can apply. And in those patients who are older, I usually give the every other week regimen that really fits best for their tolerance. And then you have the gemcitabine for patients who want treatment, but you know they're not going to tolerate the combination, or they choose to just take gemcitabine. And then you have the patients who unfortunately are not well enough to get any of those uh, treatment regimens.